What's up? Welcome to Tech 160. Today I'm going to be going step by step on how to get to the dark web. And don't worry, it's really not that scary. But if you don't have a VPN connection, now's a good time to get one. Here we go. So right now I'm in Sweden, according to my VPN anyway. I'm using Pure VPN, which I recommend. They're pretty effective at doing what you want to do. As you can see, I have the security slash privacy profile. And full disclosure, you're going to be doing this at your own risk if you follow my instructions. I can get you to the dark web, but what you do there is all on you. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go to torproject.org. That's where you're going to get the Tor browser. Tor stands for the onion router. And that's how you're going to get to the dark websites. They're called uh, onion sites because instead of ending in .com or .web, they end in .onion. All right, so hit download, and it detected that I had Windows 10. So just go ahead and download it by clicking the link. And right there on the website, it says everything you need to safely browse the internet. And that's the common misconception is that it's really dangerous to go on the dark web. It's not. It's uh, a lot of times safer. It just depends on where you're going. If you're going to websites that post illegal activities and bring the wrong types of crowd, then that's kind of like you're looking for trouble. So if you're just trying to go there for informational purposes and not getting in trouble, then you won't find any. So it's a pretty quick download, and once it's done, go ahead and run it. And Norton says it's a save file. And I'll choose English. And then I'll just accept the default of where it's getting installed. And again, it's, it's a fairly quick install. So it won't be too much longer until we have the Tor browser. And then we're free to surf anonymously. And like I was saying about the VPN, even though I have one, you don't necessarily need one. Um, the whole point of the Tor browser is to be anonymous. You're going to connect to about three different nodes before you get to your exit node, which goes to the website you want to go to. All right, so we're all finished. Let's go ahead and double click the Tor browser icon. And it's taking a little, little bit to start up there. Now you're definitely not surfing Tor for speed. Like I said, because you're going through three different nodes, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty slow. Not painfully slow, but definitely not what you're used to. Alright, so there it is. Welcome to the Tor browser. So first thing we'll do is test the Tor network settings. Alright, congratulations. This browser is configured to use Tor. And there you can see the IP address that they're assigning us. Well, that's what it appears to be anyway. And you can see that it's different from the VPN IP address that I'm assigned. Alright, so first thing we'll do is we'll go to a Surface Web website. And from there, we're going to go find some, some .onion sites because right now we don't know any. we got to figure out what they are. So I'm going to go to DuckDuckGo.com. I like DuckDuckGo because apparently they don't track your searches. So it's a search engine that doesn't track you. So... Right now, I'm just going to do a quick search for best onion sites. And first one says nine musty onion sites from the depths of the dark web. So let's go ahead and click that link. Let's see what we're working with here. Alright, so eventually it'll come up and. Here we go. These are all addresses for .onion sites that we can access from the Tor browser. Now if you try to click these links from, let's just say, Chrome, it's not going to happen. You need to be on Tor to access these websites. As you can see they all end in .onion. There's even a Facebook on uh, for Tor browser. And that's for countries that restrict the use of Facebook just so they can still you know, access. Now they're still going to be visible on social media, 
but they can circumvent the systems that prevent them from from getting on there. And we scroll down, you can see got quite a few here on the must-sees, and there's a lot more out there. But here's the hidden wiki. Let's go ahead and click this one. Now the hidden wiki is going to have a lot of links to a lot of different sites, and there's a lot of stuff that you probably don't want to see. And we'll, while that's loading up, we'll go ahead and click a couple others. We'll do blockchain. And let's go to the DuckDuckGo, which has the dot onion handle. And then we'll, we'll do the Facebook. Alright, so back to the hidden wiki. This is pretty much a one-stop shop for anything that you're looking for. Uh, it's worth checking out. I wouldn't necessarily go clicking a lot of links on here because they're going to take you to a lot of places that you might not want to see. But it's definitely a good read, some of it, just to see what they have out there. Um, as you can see in the finance, they have all these skim cards, uh, clone credit cards, commercial services, fake passports, fake IDs, guns. Fixed with all games, you can get a, um, a hacker. They got blogs, email. Social networks. Money book, the dark web Facebook of money. <laughs> yeah, definitely a lot of stuff you can get into. There's the WikiLeaks, if you're interested in reading those. And list of pedophiles, Pedora Box. I mean, there's just anything you can think of, you'll find it here. There's Cat Facts. Audio, videos, books, drugs, a tree market, I wouldn't go there, as <laughs> you can see says it's a scam twice but just about any other of these sites will probably get you something illegal all right and I don't recommend clicking anything in erotica as you can see there's probably definitely some uh, some stuff you won't be able to unsee and then there's some different language stuff All types of stuff you can get into. Like I said, it's worth just coming on and, and seeing what they have out here. But do so at your own risk. Click links at your own risk. You definitely get into some trouble. And then here's blockchain. Uh, if you wanted to get a Bitcoin wallet, purchase some Bitcoins. That way you could do some transactions over the dark web. Everything's going to be done in Bitcoin. Uh, you have to do some research if you're going to get into that. There's plenty of resources out there for you to, to learn what you have to do. And then here's DuckDuckGo, the dot onion. Um, this little search or whatever you wanted to. And just, just like Google. So gonna, what can I do on Tor Browser? not going to get traced back to me that I'm searching for what can I do on Tor browser so if you want to search for something that you don't want traced back to you somehow I would do it on the dark web and then there's the Facebook as you can see it looks like regular Facebook you can just sign in or sign up and access your account that way All right, well, that's about it. Um, I showed you how to get there. What you do there is up to you. Just try to stay ethical, try to stay legal, and uh, make sure you have some fun checking out some stuff and just see what's, what's out there. Yeah. I want to thank you for taking the time out to watch this. If you found this useful, please go ahead and hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so. I'm going to be putting out new videos each week. All right, thanks for watching. 
and stay safe.